Welcome to lecture 4. In this lecture, we will talk about graphical methods for dimensional synthesis of linkages. More specifically, in this module or the first module of this lecture, we will mainly focus on function generation problems and these will be for crank rocker mechanisms. So what is dimensional synthesis? In dimensional synthesis, we want to determine the proportions or lengths of the links necessary to accomplish the desired motions. Before you start doing dimensional synthesis, you have already determined the type of the linkage that is most appropriate solution to your problem. For example, here we will be assuming that the most appropriate linkage is the crank rocker mechanism. Now dimensional synthesis can be done either graphically or analytically. Analytical methods are more powerful and general. However, graphical methods, they give you an intuitive understanding of the problem. Therefore, we will be looking at graphical methods first. As I said before, the focus of this course will be on motion generation. However, we will also see a couple of function generation problems. So what does it mean to synthesize a four bar mechanism? What it means is that you want to compute the locations of the two fixed pivots, which determines the length of the fixed link and also compute the length of the three moving links. Or in other words, compute the locations of the moving pivots on the coupler with respect to a reference frame fixed on the coupler. Before we start, let us revisit some fundamental facts. We need to remind ourselves how to describe the position or pose of a rigid body in the plane. As an aside, I usually prefer to use the word position for a point and pose for a rigid body. This is the way in which the terms position and pose are used in modern treatment of rigid body dynamics and associated subjects like robotics or spacecraft control. However, since mechanism design is quite an old field, in this field, the term position is used for both points and rigid bodies. So let's come back to the question of how to describe the pose or position of a rigid body in the plane. Remember that a rigid body in the plane has three degrees of freedom. Let us look at the picture on the left. X, Y is a reference frame and we'll call this reference frame W. W stands for world here. So it's a reference frame that is fixed in the world. We can consider a line AB on this rigid body or this link. Then the position of one end of this line, say point A, and the orientation of the line AB with respect to the X axis with the angle theta being measured anti-clockwise gives the pose or position of the rigid body. Xa, Ya, theta is the pose Q of the rigid body. Now recall that the position of any point is just given by two coordinates in the plane. And that is why I wanted to make a distinction between position and pose, just so as to avoid overloading of the word position. However, to follow the tradition of the mechanisms literature, I will be using position of the rigid body to denote xa, ya, and theta. Another way in which you may have seen the pose of a rigid body defined is apart from taking the world frame W, fixing another frame B, which is called as the body frame, onto the rigid body. Then the pose of the rigid body is defined by the coordinates of the origin OB as well as by the angle the x-axis of the body frame which are denoted by xp and yv makes with the x-axis of the world frame with the angle being measured positive counterclockwise. Measuring an angle positive counterclockwise is a choice and that is the convention that we will be using throughout the class and it is the usual convention that people use. In this case also you will see that the pose is given by x, y, and theta. Now these two are equivalent ways of saying the same thing. 
To see the equivalence, you can think that there is a reference frame attached on this body at the point A whose x-axis is along AB. Another set of basic facts about a four-bar mechanism are the following. In a four-bar mechanism, each moving pivot will always lie on a circle as the links move. And these circles are centered on the fixed pivots. For example, the moving pivot A here always moves on this circle with center fixed at O2. The moving pivot B always moves on a circle with center at O4. One note of caution when reading this picture. What this picture says is that the pivot A will always lie on this circle. It does not say that the pivot A will be moving continuously on this circle. Similarly, it does not say that the pivot B will be moving continuously on this circle. It says pivot B will always lie on the circle. Therefore, this is not really showing a double flank mechanism. You have to be careful about interpreting that. There may be points on the circles that A or B may not reach. And this depends upon the link lengths. So let's look at the first problem that we want to solve. We want to solve the problem of rocker output for function generation. More specifically, we want to design a four bar crank rocker mechanism to obtain a rocker rotation of a given angle with equal time in forward and backward motion and the crank driven by a constant motor input. This is one of the simplest examples of function generation. Now, why is this a function generation problem? The problem requirement states that when my crank angle theta is at zero degree, the rocker angle is at its initial position or alpha. When my crank angle becomes 180 degree, my rocker angle becomes alpha plus beta. This beta is the given angle here, the desired angle through which I have to rotate the rocker. Alpha is some initial choice. It is not a design requirement, at least as described here. There may be other factors that may actually decide alpha. But for now, for this problem, you can choose alpha to be whatever you want. More pictorially, when the crank is at zero degrees, the rocker may be at some initial angle alpha. And when the crank makes a full 180 degree rotation, so the crank comes to this place here, then the rocker will be coming to this position here by moving to an angle beta. So when the crank moves through 180 degree in the anticlockwise direction, the rocker moves through the angle beta in the anticlockwise direction. Then when the crank moves to the next 180 degree, the rocker goes back to its original position. There are two basic facts that we'll be using to develop a graphical solution procedure for solving this problem. First, as I stated before, the moving pivots will always move on circles centered about the fixed pivots. The second fact is a characteristic of a crank rocker mechanism. It states that at the extreme positions, the two moving pivots will be collinear with a fixed pivot or the two moving pivots and the fixed pivot will lie on the same line. Now I will go through the solution procedure. In this slide, I have written down the entire solution procedure. So my step one is to draw the output link in both the extreme positions, which are O4B1 and O4B2. In order to do this, I have made some choices. First, I have chosen the length of the output link O4B. This is a choice that I have made. And of course, I have chosen the position of my fixed pivot O4. One thing to note is that B1 and B2 will lie on the same circle. Why? Because it is created by the link rotating about O4, moving from the pose O4 B1 to the pose O4 B2. Then join B1 B2 and extend that line. Now, as I said before, the fixed pivot will be on the line joining the two moving pivots at the extreme positions. 
So at the extreme positions, the second fixed pivot can be chosen on this line. Any point on this line can serve as a choice for the second fixed pivot. Now it may not be a good choice, that we will see later, but it is a possible choice. So this is the point here that is chosen for the fixed pivot O2. Now draw a circle of radius B1, B2 by 2 that is centered at O2. The points where this circle intersects the green line. This point is A2 and this point is A1. O2, A2 or O2, A1 is my crank or driving link and A2, B2 or A1, B1 is my coupler or floating link. Note that this curve that I have drawn here for the coupler is mainly for visualization purpose. The link is the straight line joining A2 and B2 or A1 and B1. Another thing to note is that the subscript 1 and 2 for the moving pivots here just denotes positions of the same point at different times. So A1, B1 and A2, B2 are the same link. They are shown at two different extreme positions. Once you have done this construction, your mechanism has a fixed link or ground link O2, O4. The crank is A2, O2. The coupler is A2, B2. So the length of the coupler is the length of the straight line between A2 and B2. The length of the crank is the radius of the circle or A2, O2 or B1, B2 by 2. The length of the fixed link you can measure by measuring the distance O2, O4. And the length of the output link you had fixed beforehand which was O4, B. So your final answer will be the lengths of all the links of the mechanism. That is the design of your mechanism. Now once you have designed a mechanism, you need to check how good your mechanism is. To do this check, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that our mechanism is a Grashof mechanism or it satisfies the Grashof conditions. If it doesn't, then there will be no crank, so it cannot be a crank locker mechanism. What you have ensured is that the mechanism will be only at these two extreme positions. You have not ensured that it can continuously go from one extreme position to another. In order to do that, at least in this case, you have to make sure that the mechanism is crash off. In other cases, you have to do a little bit more, and I will come to that later. The next thing that you have to do is also check something that is known as transmission angle. We haven't talked about transmission angle yet, and we will talk about this in a later class, but I just wanted to give you the two basic checks that you should be doing after you design the mechanism. The picture on this page essentially shows the mechanism at one of the extreme configurations. So my fixed pivot was 04, the first position was O4B1, the second position was O4B2, this angle was beta, my desired angle of motion. A2 is the position of the moving pivot at one extreme position. O2 is my fixed pivot and A1 is the position of the moving pivot A corresponding to the position of the output link at O4B1. Now again, I have shown this link here as a curved link just to show you that the actual link is A to B2. That's the mathematical link, the straight line A to B2. But the physical manifestation of this mathematical link may be this curved body. And as I said before, you need to check rush of condition and transmission angles after the mechanism is designed. One more thing that I want you to note here is that when the crank moves through 180 degree, the rocker moves through the angle beta from B1 to B2. Now when the crank moves through the next 180 degree and goes back to A1, the rocker goes back to its original starting pose or position. Since the crank is moving at uniform speed or driven by a motor moving at uniform speed, the time taken by the rocker to go forward and backward are the same. 
Now there are mechanisms in which you want to do some work when the rocker is moving forward and when the rocker is moving backward there is no useful work to be done. So you want the return motion to be much quicker than the forward motion so that the cycle time is reduced. These are called quick return mechanisms. And next we will see how to design quick return mechanisms. As I just stated, a quick return mechanism is a crank rocker mechanism in which the approach time of the rocker is larger than the return time. The time ratio of a quick return mechanism is defined as the ratio of return time and approach time. More mathematically, time ratio TR is equal to return time by approach time. Since return has to be quicker, the time ratio is less than 1 for a quick return mechanism. So our goal now is to design a quick return mechanism with a given time ratio and a given range of motion of the output rocker. The other design requirement that the crank is driven by a constant speed motor remains same. So let's say that we are given a time ratio TR of 1 is to 1.25. This means 1 by 1.25 which is the same as 4 by 5. And 45 degree is the range of the output rocker motion. So let's go through the steps of synthesizing this mechanism. First, we will choose our O4 position for the fixed pivot. Choose the link length O4B and draw the link at the two extreme positions with the angle between them being 45 degrees. Now we compute the angle delta. Since the crank is moving at a constant speed, the time ratio can also be thought of as the angle moved by the crank during the return, which is alpha, divided by the angle moved by the crank during the approach, which is beta. So 4 by 5 or time ratio will be equal to alpha by beta. And the number 4 by 5 is in this case. For other problems, the number may be different. And alpha plus beta is equal to 360 degree because the crank has to rotate through 360 degrees. And by that time, the rocker has to move to B2 and come back to B1. From these two equations, we can compute alpha and beta. And once we compute alpha and beta, we can compute delta, which is the difference between 180 degree and alpha. And it will be the same as the difference between 180 degree and beta. Now draw an arbitrary line through B1. Then draw a line through B2 that intersects the line through B1 or this line here at an angle of delta, where delta is the angle that we computed in the second step. So how will we do this graphically? First, we will draw a line through B2 that is parallel to the line through B1. Then we'll use our protractor, set it at B2 and measure the angle delta here. This line, when extended, intersects the line through B1. This is the point where we place the other fixed pivot O2. Now obtain the point B1 prime on O2 B2 such that O2 B1 equal to O2 B prime. So this is the point B1 prime such that O2 B1 is equal to O2 B1 prime. This can be done by taking O2 as the center O to B1 as a radius and drawing an arc that intersect the line through B2. That point of intersection is B1 prime. Now draw a circle of diameter B2 B1 prime or radius B2 B1 prime by 2 centered at O2. Then the circle intersects O2 B2 
which is this line and O2B1 which is this line at the points A2 and A1. So this is my point A1 and this is my point here A2. O2A2 is my crank and A2B2 is the coupler. Again I am joining A2B2 by this curved line but the actual link is the straight line between A2 and B2. You have to check if the mechanism is Grashoff and if it is not then you have to repeat. So the mechanism now is O2, O4, this is the length of the fixed link. O2, A2 is the length of the crank. A2, B2, the straight line segment between A2, B2, that is the length of my coupler or floating link. And O4, B2 is the length of the output link, which I have chosen beforehand. The picture on the left is essentially the construction that I did on the previous slide. Note that this angle here is alpha and this angle is beta and also note that when the rocker is at its extreme position o4 b1 o2 a1 and a1 b1 they are collinear or the two moving pivots a and b at this position which are denoted by a1 and b1 are collinear with o2 similarly at the other extreme position o4 b2 the fixed pivot O2 is collinear with A2 and B2. To get the link lengths, you can directly measure them from the mechanism. You should also note that if R2 is the length of the crank and R3 is the length of the coupler, then R3 minus R2 equal to O2 B2. At this extreme position, if this is my fixed pivot O2, my crank is here O2 A2 and my coupler is like this. So my coupler is folding onto the crank. Whereas at the other extreme position, if this is my fixed pivot O2, my crank is at A1 and my coupler is from A1 to B1 or it is stretched out. That's why R3 plus R2 equal to O2B1. So you can also measure O2B2 and O2B1 and get the length of the crank and the coupler. This picture on the right actually shows the quick return mechanism at the two extreme positions. You should note that as the crank moves to the angle beta or in the approach phase, the rocker moves from B1 to B2. Similarly, when the crank moves through this angle alpha, the rocker moves from B2 to B1. And since this angle is small, this motion will be faster. The return motion will be faster than the forward motion.